Hello. Today I want to tell you about a recent project we've worked on focusing on how rational agents accumulate evidence on social networks. In particular, we're focused on how rational agents make binary decisions between two options uh, when receiving a sequence of noisy pieces of evidence, much the way that people may when they're deciding between two candidates of a primary race or between which of two phones they might like to buy. People tend to be nested in large social networks on Twitter or in physical friendship networks and may use the information of their friends in order to help them make decisions. In order to mathematically build up our framework, let's start with the problem of a single individual making the best decision when determining which of two biased coins is being flipped. One coin is heads biased, with a probability of P of coming up heads. The other coin is tails biased, with a probability of P coming up tails. The coin is flipped randomly until the person decides which coin is being flipped. Now, in order to determine with each coin flip, what the probability is that that coin is the heads biased or tails biased coin, what a rational Bayesian agent will do is use, uh, for instance, a log likelihood ratio update, where the sequence of observations is interpreted as providing evidence in favor of H plus or H minus according to Bayes' rule. The fact that these observations are independent coin flips and uh, that uh, each of them has a known probability of uh, appearing, whether uh, the coin is heads or tails, allows one to compute the log likelihood ratio of each observation and simply add that to the previous running total of the sum of the, the previous log likelihood ratios. If heads comes up, this provides a log likelihood ratio of log of p divided by 1 minus p. This is the log of the probability of coming up heads if it's a heads bias coin divided by the probability of coming up tails if it's a tails bias coin. And similarly for if tails is uh, appearing, except we've now flipped the, the appearance of the probabilities in this LLR. How does an agent make a decision? Well, uh, the best way to do this in order to manage both the speed and the accuracy decision is simply to set a, a threshold on the decision. There's a threshold theta plus, where if y goes above that, you would choose the heads bias coin. A threshold theta minus, where the agent chooses uh, uh, the tails bias coin, if y t is below theta minus. In this case, uh, theta minus is less than zero and theta plus is greater than zero. This case of symmetric thresholds is given by where the absolute value of the thresholds is equal. Here's an example trajectory of uh, a, a series of coin flips and the log likelihood ratio that uh, comes with each. As you see, each coin flip leads to an equal increment of log likelihood ratio updates. And a threshold here is set uh, uh, that amounts to three, uh, a differential of three heads, uh, more heads than tails or three more tails than heads. And in this case, because three more tails than heads appeared here, uh, the, the observer chooses the heads bias coin. Now, individuals don't make decisions like this in isolation. Usually if you're deciding between you know, which product to buy or, wh or which uh, uh, person to vote for in a primary, you're also using uh, social information in addition to maybe you know, specialist or, or reading your own sort of private information sources. And an individual, when they make decisions, has to consider that they're uh, nested in a network of other individuals that are making that same decision that may steer the decisions that they make. And the fact that somebody may be biased one direction or another when making a decision um, also influences essentially how much evidence they need to choose one option or another. In the animal kingdom, of course, uh, organisms make these sorts of decisions all the time when fleeing a predator. 
this animal doesn't just use knowledge that it has for, of the predator, but it also uses knowledge that it has of, of where its uh, 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 nest or group mates are running. We idealize this situation essentially by thinking of um, a rational observer that receives noisy pieces of evidence in, like coin flips, for instance. And then each individual just shares their decision state with their neighbors. This problem has a long history of study from sort of the, the jury picking problem of, of Condorcet to uh, more of the development of common knowledge and how um, individuals in a group may share pieces of information. But only recently have people thought about the fact that information is received uh, with some time stamp. And then individuals may also share information uh, with some temporal structure to it. So um, the idea of mixing together both social group dynamics with sort of temporal information flow is, is novel and, and still understudied. So we consider an idealized setup with uh, N agents. First of all, um, that they need to determine the, the current value of some binary state variable that can be uh, either H plus or H minus. And these agents make independent sequential observations uh, from the state H, uh, which have measurement distributions given by F plus and F minus. They do not share their information uh, directly, but rather just observe each other's decision states. So agent two does not get to see, you know, observation psi one, one, psi one, two, et cetera, but rather just sees whether agent one has made a decision or not, and if so, what decision they've made. And so um, at each time step, the decision state is then just given by this ternary random variable zero, which is that agent J has made no decision at time T, or one or minus one that they've made choice H plus or H minus at time T, by time T. And uh, the agents essentially assume that uh, each uh, neighbor has all the same likelihood functions for their observations and the same thresholds as well. And we can extend to the more general case, but uh, the equations get a lot more complicated in this case. One assumption that uh, may not be entirely realistic is that observations are independent uh, for each of the uh, agents and across time, uh, and we're developing extensions to address that case. So the simplest case to consider first is the one where we have two agents with a unidirectional network. Agent one does not see agent two's decisions, but agent two does see agent one's decision states. So agent one accumulates their evidence according to some log likelihood ratio update, similar to the coin example that I showed before. Agent two accumulates their private information according to the type of log likelihood ratio that agent one follows, but with their own independent measurements, but also uses social information based on the decision states of agent one. The main way that this social information is computed is to look at if agent one has made a decision or not yet. If they haven't, then essentially agent two considers what the survival probabilities would be for uh, agent one not making a decision yet, given that the current true state is S plus or S minus. And we can compute these survival probabilities using uh, tools from uh, first passage time analysis for, uh, for Markov chains. In the case of symmetric thresholds, these survival probabilities end up being the same. And so actually observing uh, an indecision gives no evidence in this case. With asymmetric thresholds, what we found is that early on, if an agent is biased to really require less information for let's say the minus decision than for the plus decision, early on, no decision sort of gives no evidence. But at an intermediate time, this provides evidence that they should have chosen H minus now. So if they haven't made a choice yet, it points that they've received evidence in favor of, of the H plus choice. But as time goes on, this, this delay becomes less informative because they really should have made you know, either an H plus or H minus choice at that point. So consider the case of um, an election. Maybe you have a friend that's uh, a staunch Democrat or Republican. And maybe the night before the election, they still haven't made up a decision about who they're going to vote for. This suggests that they've gotten evidence in favor of the other candidate. And so you could potentially incorporate that evidence um, into your own decision-making process. The fact that 
a person with strong biases somehow is, is indecisive, suggests that they've gotten strong information opposite to their bias. And so we can see how this unfolds mathematically in a couple of examples. In this case, agent one is receiving random pieces of evidence and eventually receives enough evidence in favor of option um, H plus that it makes a decision. And at this point in time, uh, this provides a, a bump of social evidence essentially to agent two. So right after this decision, there's an increase in the evidence that agent two receives. But even before this decision, because agent one has a bias, there's a slight uh, bit of information in favor of, of option H plus in this case, because they have not made a decision in this case, even though um, they, re they require less information for H minus than H plus. This sort of thing does, uh, this sort of bump does not happen in this case when agent two makes the decision first because agent two uh, does not provide a, a bump of social information to agent one. So in this case, agent two is just sort of pushed along by the fact that agent one has not made a decision yet. And this pushes them enough in this direction that they make a, an H plus decision slightly earlier than they would otherwise. In the case of recurrent networks, what happens is that not only does agent one uh, pass on its decision information to agent two, but agent two passes on its decision information to agent one. And because of this, if either if these agents are both biased, what that means is that after each observation, agent one and agent two must observe each other, update their beliefs, observe each other again, update their beliefs again, and do this again until they've essentially extracted all the information they can out of the fact that uh, e the, the other one has not made a decision yet. And this relies on the fact that each time they update their belief, there's some chance that that update would, would push them over the boundary of making a decision. Again, in the case of symmetric thresholds, this indecision is, is uninformative, but for asymmetric thresholds, this, this updating, as I said, requires this multi-step updating process. And eventually it, it converges, uh, assuming that the set of possible observations is, is finite. In the case of more complicated networks like chains or uh, three-agent networks, what happens is that some agents may not directly observe other agents, but they observe agents that observe those agents. And so when agent three observes agent two, they're actually inferring also what information agent two is receiving from agent one. This sort of uh, recurrent process uh, of, of this sort of indirect uh, inference process isn't required when one has a fully connected network, but this, this recursive updating process after each observation that occurs in, in, in uh, two agent uh, recurrent networks is required. In the case of large clicks, what we found is that the first agent to make a decision strongly steers the beliefs of the other agents. When agent one makes a decision, this provides a large impulse of evidence to the, the, uh, all of the agents so that the agents that are in agreement all get pushed over threshold. After this, the undecided agents both look at how many agents agreed, and how many other agents were still left undecided, and update their beliefs as such. And typically what happens is that the undecided agents will see that more agents were in agreement if agent one made the correct decision in this case. And so effectively coupling together this click leads to fairly rapid and accurate decisions at the group level. So we found several things from this model. First of all, that we have a systematic Bayesian optimal way of accumulating evidence on social networks given some noisy evidence accumulation process. These calculations are fairly complex, but we're confident that we can reduce the resulting models to more heuristic models that are amenable to, to analytical analysis. And we're presently extending this, this work to consider clicks where evidence is accumulated continuously and also more complex network formulations. We also consider the, the case of correlated observations where both uh, individual agents have, have correlated information with one another and maybe also individual agents have information that's correlated across time. 
and also cases where agents have to infer the structure of the network. This work is currently in press at the SIAM Journal of Dynamical Systems and also available on archive. Thanks for your time.